What is going on, guys? It's your boy Avery here, and I think, at least from my testing, I don't think Mr. Runes are as good as we thought that they were. So make sure that you smash every little crap out of that subscribe button. We are at almost 770 subscribers. We are we are killing it, ladies and gentlemen. Smash it so we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers, and you too can be part of the Ultra Ball, Ultra Banana Squad, as we are going hard in the paint talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! life and the universe and things that are particularly interesting to me. So let's talk about Mr. Runes. So I've been testing Mr. Runes for about a day and a half now, and usually within like a day, day and a half, I get a good feel for a deck, um, and I'm able to know like, okay, this is going to be good, it's going to be booty, you know, whatever. And I've tried several different iterations of Mr. Rune, and I just... I've tried everything, I feel, and I don't know if it's just because our balance is different or our format's different from the OCG or whatever, or because now it's been delayed and we're getting it later, but it's like no matter what I try with Mistarune, it always seems to run into the same issues, whether I'm using an invoked engine, a branded engine, Dogmatica engine, even using Diviner or the Herald to dump Kelvic to get that additional five-card mill, I run into the same issue, which is that the deck just runs out of gas every single time. And you have really cool interactions in this deck. You know, you can use Instant Fusion to cheese out uh, Gary or Jerry, whatever the fuck. Um, since he can't be destroyed by card effects, he won't get popped by the Instant Fusion. And then you can just ditch a card, get a Mr. Rune spell that's not a quick play from your grave. So either the Continuous spell or the Field spell spring in the Mr. Rune. And then you can keep your combos going. The other thing is, too, that of course everybody and their mama has talked about, is that the deck lives and dies by its Field spell. And yes, you do have technically two, uh, three, four, uh, if you're playing Terraforming, five. You know, you have multiple ways to get to the Spring of the Mystery Rune, not to mention that you also have Point of the Mystery Rune, which just lets you add any Mystery Rune cards, so you can add the Spring that way. The issue is, though, with this deck, and I especially feel this whenever you're trying to combine this deck with, like, an aggro deck or just anything that wants to use its battle phase, is that you get punished for playing this engine because Konami purposefully made the deck or the archetype rather in such a way that you just can't access your battle phase now remember that all of the mr and quick play spells say that you skip your next battle phase after this card resolves so if you activate multiple at least how it's currently ruled if you activate multiple it's going to skip multiple battle phases because it's going to stack on top of each other similar to like how frozen soul would be you skip the next available battle phase so if i activate freezing curse and point of the mystery in the same turn, I don't have two turns of battle phases. So, you know, I can bring out a Baroness. Yeah, it looks all cute and, you know, it's an Omni Negate and shit, but if you can't attack with it, you're not really doing much with it. So the deck by design, Konami is saying, hey, look, this is a mill deck. You are not going to be allowed to attack with this. Whether you're bringing out a Mr. Infusion or whether you're milling cards, we're not going to let you attack with this. Because by the time you've activated 10 spells, you're skipping like 10, 11 battle phases. So you're not going to be able to attack with this deck. You can supplement other engines to, you know, put out negates on the board. You know, you can use an invoked engine to get to your Macaba and then be able to negate a spell once a turn or a trap, what have you. But yet what's the point if you can't attack with them? So then I thought, well, what about like a Mystic Mine engine? And this was actually something that my dad was working on for a while. You can tell it's just kind of a hodgepodge of things, you know, just to kind of get an idea of, you know, something that we can use. And like, we've tried scapegoat, set rotation to like give them a Mystic Mine so you can get to the spring. We've tried like reincarnation with present card skill drain to lock out any sort of continuous effects like Masquerade. Uh, and it's just... It runs into the same issue that if you run out of gas, you run out of gas. And there's not really much that you can do about that because you rely on your field spell to get you back up to three of your quick play spells at the bottom of the deck to hopefully draw three new ones that you haven't yet used. And you hope that your 2,000 defense uh, Munin can just sit on the board gaining you 1,000 life points at the end of each turn so that you can keep your life points up and just, you know, win the game through sheer, you know, uh, snowballing. But yet you can't really snowball with this deck because the way that you snowball is by banishing the opponent's cards from their deck. And if they go second and, you know, they're able to set up even just like one beat stick, 
Like, uh, let's just say they set up a Baroness. They're just going to hit you for 3,000 every turn and just keep on punching through. If you don't have, you know, quick play spells in your hand or the field spell to drop out another fusion to protect yourself, you're just going to end up losing. Now, I did also look at like a little mill deck that I've had sitting here on my EDO Pro, you know, for a while, just kind of collecting dust. And it's just mostly a bunch of mill cards that, you know, I can kind of refer back to to kind of test things out. And you can't even combine regular mill cards with this deck like needle worm is too slow you're not using flip effects in fucking 2022 your asshole is going to get destroyed warm worm is cool because just anytime it's destroyed so if you dark hole your own board then it'll still mill three from the opponent necro face is kind of cool because it'll take all the banished cards from both players decks put them back into the deck and then necro face gains 100 for each but yet why would you want to do that you're defeating the purpose of mystery yeah you'll have a big beat stick but the opponent's just going to negate it they're going to pop it they're going to say go eat my ass like it, it's it's not good no one's playing battle fair in 2022 that card sucks ass <laughs> a one day of peace yeah the opponent can draw and then you can use the mysterune card where you can rip a card out of the opponent's hand the dispel thing um so they draw off the one day you could play it rip a card out of their hand and then they mill two but it's like you you just can't keep the engine going the only way that you really keep the engine going is if you get three quick play spells in your grave between your turn and then like finish it off on the opponent's turn and then draw three new quick plays that you haven't played yet and then you know try and mill the opponent out within a couple turns and hope that they can't get around like your 2000 defense monster or whatever monster you have out so that you know you can just continue to steamroll them but if they can push through that which i feel like a lot of meta decks can right now you're just not winning the game. Also, I did look into the Ashizu cards, and we do get these in Darkwing Blast, but we don't get Darkwing Blast until like a month or two after Power of the Elements, which Tactical Masters, which has Mr. Runes, is like three weeks after Power of the Elements. So we're not really getting the Ashizu stuff for you know, possibly like a month or so after we get Tactical Masters. And it's like, I feel like Mr. Rune is just not going to be able to to have any sort of impact you know i've seen sky strikers mess with it but even then it just seems to make sky strikers clunky like any deck that tries to be aggressive if they throw in a mr rune engine it just doesn't benefit them because the archetype inherently doesn't want to be aggressive like a perfect example is something like uh, freezing curse it's an imperm you negate an opponent's monster and then it vanishes through off the top of their deck but you skip your battle phase point of the mystery rune searches you any mystery rune card but you skip your battle phase yeah it mills but it's only the top card so it's really not much the best one out of all of them i would say would be mystery rune of destruction because it's just a better mst arguably you pop a spell or trap the opponent controls and then they have to mill four you know, yeah, you got to skip your battle phase, but like if you're playing something like Mystic Mind Burn, having a back row removal card like Mr. Rune of Destruction is just all the free chicken tendies because you're not going to give a fuck about your battle phase. And that's where I feel like Mr. Runes as a whole really comes into play is with decks that don't care about their battle phase or are something like a burn deck that just never uses the battle phase because then they can supplement their deck with things like mr rune of destruction to pop a spell or trap and then also mill four um or just using things like you know uh, applying the effect of to a monster camp destroyed by battle by card effects and then the opponent banishes three and i think in general too what the deck really needs is more cards that mill more cards than just like one or two like you can only control one deceit and it only banishes the top card like that's some baby back bullshit. Point of the Mystery Rune only gets rid of the top card. Uh, even the special summon one, where the fuck is it at? Uh, it Deceit gets rid of two. Like, that's decent, I guess. Um, here we go. Uh, Brilliant Flame. It pops a special summon monster and then mills two. Like, yeah, it can add up really quick. But if you're hitting all of these low mills from the get-go, it's not really going to benefit you in any way. Like, the best ones... Are like raging storm because if the opponent has like 10 cards on their board and they're going to get 10 milled out uh you got golden droplets that mills four you've got freezing curse that does three that's not amazing but it's better than two or one you got the spell or trap removal that banishes four which combined with deceit mills five and that in theory is good 
But it's like you have to hit these cards, either opening with them or drawing them in a spring in the mist rune. If the opponent's playing fucking lightning storms or cosmic cyclones, they're going to just shit on this because spring in the mist rune doesn't have any inherent protection. You know, yeah, you can play field barrier, but then what the fuck are you doing at that point? You're just playing three copies of a card that are pretty much dead without this on the board. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Am I just tackling Mr. Runes in the wrong way? Like I said, I've looked at a bunch of different builds. I saw a build that was playing Magical Something with three X drives, but then that just seemed to be really clunky as fuck, and, like, you don't want to banish stuff out of your extra deck. So, guys, please, let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm, I'm really lost. Like, I really want to play Mr. Runes and have fun with it, but I just I can't figure out the right build. So, Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for the support, and I will see you in the next video.